I'll probably ask about his resume first. Now that I'm thinking about it, like where he. Was. I can I can talk okay, about yeah, it. I can talk about Jeff Scott's resume. Okay, we'll, we'll start with the resume. Let's just now. let's just get it going because I I, I kind of get to go. But. Okay, that's no worries. Yeah. All right, I'm ready whenever uh, you are, Jeremiah. Whenever you are, sorry. Yep, you've been recording for a second. Okay. <coughs> Welcome to the Zcast. This is Sebastian Wick, and today we are discussing the recent firing of USF football head coach Jeff Scott. Scott coached the team for three seasons and was recently let go following a 54 28 loss to Temple. With things up in the air, USF sports fanatics are getting heated. We have USF's own Game Glassman and Scotty Schemmel here to talk why things went wrong. How's it going, guys? Doing good. How good. Are How are you? Thank you for having us on. Good. Yeah, for sure. Glad to have you guys here. So, I don't know if Gabe wants to start first or Scotty. Um, where did this guy come from? Where did Jeff Scott come from? Like, kind of, where did he get his football knowledge? Well, yeah. yeah, yeah. He had twelve seasons at Clemson, and uh, I mean that's a solid record if you look at what they were doing the last few years before he came. And then um, everything just kind of went bad. I feel like the main point here that I want to make is that was Dabo Sweeney's doing, not yeah. Jeff Scott's doing. What do you want to say, Gabe? Yeah, I mean, obviously he had the hype up from uh, Clemson um, because Dabo Sweeney and Clemson, uh, national championship. Um, so Jeff Scott, and as offensive coordinator at Clemson, he had a big name for himself. So when he came mm-hmm. to USF, you know, it was this huge hiring. It's like, oh my gosh, we got Jeff Scott, best offense in best offense in college. Our, our team's gonna be off the charts. We had a great year. It's gonna be even better. Then you know, just kind of falls out, and it's kind of no explanation, and just kind of it's kind of sad because you, because as, with a four and twenty six record as his, with his time here at USF, um, it's definitely something that wasn't wasn't expected, especially. Um, from him so with so mm. much off- offensive knowledge um, from his history with uh, Clemson. Yeah, you got to think, I mean, coming from a school like Clemson as well, just the fact that the facilities are crazier, the players are better, all this stuff. Mm-hmm. I mean, we have such a different school. We're not a football school per se. Yeah. So, I mean, I don't know. Like, do you guys think that if, like, we maybe had a bit of a better program in terms of, like, closer to Clemson, do you think it would be? I mean, helpful for us, or do you think that it all stems from just coaching? I mean, Jeff Scott, that's what Jeff Scott has been trying to do for yeah. through his time. I mean, he, we have the new indoor mm-hmm. practice facility on the day we're recording this. They actually hosted their first practice ever in that facility. Oh, wow. Um, yeah, cool. So, yeah. and he's been trying to change the culture with the new locker rooms and all these new uniforms and, you know, getting, getting uh, these opponents with BYU, Alabama, you know, Michael, um, athletic director Michael Kelly has also been – very involved in this football program and with the new with a potential new on campus stadium coming in. Um the culture the culture is uh, that's what Jeff Scott was all about, the culture. Yeah. And he was trying to change mm-hmm. he was trying to change the page. But once again, like everything he did off field never translated to on field and that's mm-hmm. why he got fired. And honestly, I know what you say about changing the culture, but I mean I think about it in every situation when a new head coach comes in, that's the first thing you gotta try to do. Mm-hmm. Everyone wants to give you new new uniforms, everyone wants to do this, do that, in indoor, indoor practice facility. But when it comes down to it, it's it's on the field stuff. So I, f- I feel like he didn't I mean, don't get me wrong, this situation was not easy to come into for mm-hmm. him. I mean, it, we don't have the best program, but the foundation is there. I mean, we have we're building a, a stadium, we have all this stuff that's gonna happen. So the foundation is there. This this program can do something. It can be a top twenty five team one day. They just have to get the right coach. And Jeff Scott just wasn't that. What sucks is with like USF is like they've never really had like the right coach. Mm-hmm. So when you talk about head coaching and that's where they need it, that's where they've been struggling. And from what I've heard with the potential, the possible potential head coaches that could be filling in um, after uh, Danny DePrado is done with his in- in- interim. I don't like it. I don't know. I don't know if yeah. those. I don't know if those coaches are going to be fit for the job. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I'm not too sure either. It's it's looking a little rough right now. But um, I, I did like uh, the moves they made. Uh, you know, Ernie Sims is going to be defensive coordinator now. Mm-hmm. I think we were about to get into that. Yeah, I was going to ask you. Um, I did notice that as well. Um, I know that he has like you were talking. We were talking about earlier. He has a background in the NFL. How do you kind of think that 
um, is going to, I guess, maybe even culture-wise change our program for the better? I think it's going to be great. I mean, he was a 2006 first-round draft pick. Mm -hmm. He had eight seasons in the NFL. I mean, Cowboys, um, he played for uh, Eagles and the Colts. And when you're a, a linebacker starting at that level, the pro level, you make audibles, you make changes according to when an offense will make a change. So if he can make those changes at the level where he's playing against the top teams on earth, I think he can do it here. I think he can have success here. And he just seems like a very good presence um, for the younger guys to have someone that they can look up to like that. So I think he, Ernie Sims uh, is a great move up to defensive coordinator, and I hope they keep him there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, you have to imagine also, I mean, just playing the NFL, you have mm -hmm. multiple connections. You've you got do. outreach all over the place. You say yep. he's played for the Cowboys. Yeah, people teams. come in and speak. You can So many connections. Yeah. It's completely different. Yeah, and I want to talk about uh, – uh, former defensive coordinator Bob Shoup for a second yeah, where he got Shoup. fired there. Mm -hmm. um, he's like, um, if you paid close attention to this USF football team, you'll notice that their offense has been getting better. Mm -hmm. um, you got guys like Jimmy Ford, you got Gary Bo, you bring in Gary yeah. Bohannon from Baylor, um, who is a huge, he's a huge get. Their transfer, their transfer season last year was being noticed by national media, it was being mm -hmm. noticed by everyone. And the, de and the defensive side just never picked it never. up. And the offense still kept going and going, but once again, they still are missing a few. Um, talk about how much missing there are a few pieces. They're missing a whole defense. It's not they even are. just they're not. It's not even just about defense, defensive coordinator, defensive leadership. Jeff Scott was an offense coach. He is an offense loving coach. He I, he did not put a lot of care yeah. towards that defense. He put a lot of care towards the offense, but that defense was looking lackluster, and it's sh and it shows at week after week after week, especially this previous week to Temple. You had a Temple. I was about to say you had a Temple team struggling, mm -hmm. two wins on the season. They come in and score fifty four points on us. That's unbelievable. Crazy. That's ridiculous. Especially when you come into the game three and a half point favorites on the road. Yeah, and I, it's kind of, it's kind of ridiculous where mm -hmm. you see where you see kind of like this expectation. You got to win this game. You mm -hmm. got to do something. And mm -hmm. it's still week after week is just so struggling. Yep. It's just struggling for fans, and not even just the team anymore. The fans are struggling. They are. How do you how do you expect to when you have such poor attendance at games and you're doing mm -hmm. that bad? How do you expect fans to go to your games? How do you expect to get more boosters? How do you expect to get anything? Yeah, it's not gonna, yeah. It's, it's really just, sad. Yeah. It is really sad. It is. Uh, I just well, I actually. A side topic real quick. I wanted to get your opinions on playing at Raymond James. What do you guys think about that? Because we got our new stadium coming, but I feel like it just hinders everything when we're in a giant stadium yeah. and it's, it's empty. I mean... It's like, yeah, it's like... It seems like a cool experience, but it's the cool experience for the fact that there's yeah, fans there. This exactly. is a big college weekend. Yeah. Like, if it was a big full, game. Like, it was a good experience against UF. Um, oh, yeah. Yeah, like, last, last season, and you had everyone packed in. It was full. It was awesome. But that's not every game. And that was a one-time thing. Mm -hmm. so. I think I get really jealous when I look at my timeline on Saturday and I'm seeing on college game day these stadiums packed yeah. to the brim like sardines of st like the whole student body. You got friends just, of Tennessee, friends of Bama, and you're looking at their... Just like all, all the SEC, Tennessee, ACC crazy. schools, all mm -hmm. the Power 5 schools. And then you look at USF and you got the entire 300 section, no one even <laughs> up there besides bird poop. That's what that's what yeah, you got basically. up there, and <laughs> you know, like they do fill their student section. Their their student section this year at least is looking great because the last few seasons they had the COVID, but their student section is definitely looking a lot better. Mm -hmm. But if you look around the stadium, no one's showing up. It's still so. I no think, one's coming back either. Like the parents aren't bringing their kids, kind of thing. Why would they? <laughs> why would they? To your points exactly. Alumni aren't exactly. happy. Like nobody's happy about yeah. the program right now. What's the what's sad is. With the teams that we already have on campus, the women's teams who are doing really good mm -hmm. and getting us into those championship women's talks. Women's basketball, all these yeah. different teams. What's, right. what's sad about that is they don't get any promotions compared to the mm -hmm. football team. Mm -hmm. I know a lot of money goes to that football team, but in my opinion, I think more promotion should go to the teams that are doing better. We, mm -hmm. I think everybody can agree that USF is not a football school. We are, we are, we have a, we have, we have good athletics, mm -hmm. maybe not in football. I don't know what type of school we are. It can be after the stadium, though. I think it can be. It can be a football school. Yeah, but when's the stadium going to come in, like, five, six years? Like, yeah. it's still, like, 
like I think USF fans are tired of waiting. And then when that yeah, when that on campus yeah, when that on campus stadium, that doesn't mean you're gonna win just because you get yeah. just you get, you get a, a multi million dollar building just plopped right there. It doesn't mean that yeah. you're gonna win. The fans, it's gonna be great for the student body. Yeah. But the culture culture also makes a lot of differences in football. Mm-hmm. I think you know down the road. I mean, I do agree with what you're saying though. The statement you made about they need to focus on other things. That's obvious. That's very true. But the culture changes everything. They don't feel hyped up when our stadium, you know, they're playing at UF the week before and it's a, a, a sea of orange and blue. And then they come back the next week and they have, what, a thousand people wearing green shirts yeah. and it's surrounded by red <laughs> seats. I mean, you know, it's that's pretty disheartening when you're trying to if play. If Temple was there, they would think there would be 80% Temple fans there. Yeah, I know, <laughs> literally. If, was, if, no, if Temple, if like Temple Houston came, plays, oh, wait. The yeah. stadium is packed with Houston <laughs> fans, you know what I mean? No, if, yeah, if Temple, if the game was here last weekend, then you would, you would think it was full Temple fans. So, like, that's just something... Culture is a big part of that, I'd say. Mm-hmm. Yeah. But I do want to go back real quick on what you were saying about the quarterbacks and uh, the offense. The offense is looking a little better, and that quarterback room is solid. Yeah. They, they got some good young people. Jerry's and much, um, yeah. yeah, and uh, you got Byron Brown. He's look, looking solid. Bad he got boy. in. Yeah. Bad boy. So they're, 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 they're mixing it up with different quarterbacks and just trying to see what works, and I think that for the rest of the season, that's what they need to be doing. You think we're set up at this point to be, I don't know, six, seven-win team next year at least? Okay. What do you think? What do you um, think? We need a lot. We need a lot more to yeah. get six to seven wins. I think. I think maybe. Uh, I mean, my, right now, my guess would be four wins, maybe. Okay. But I would say it, they need more time for their young guys to develop. They didn't do bad recruiting. They just everyone's young. That you know needs to be where they need to be. So mm-hmm. I, I'd say maybe not next year, but the year after. Okay. Maybe they can get there, and it also depends on the coach. So yeah, that's how that, a, how that that's all a goes big one. That's a big one. I that's will say. One. Uh, keep in mind that USF's home opener next year, or I guess their second home game, um, Alabama. <laughs> now you see that's that's yeah. the thing. Like why we we really don't need that right now. We no, do we not need, need Alabama, Alabama dog. And the off chance we win, this program goes to goes to the moon. But like we got WK to open up the season. We got WKU, if, uh, FAMU, and then Alabama. We got WKU. Yeah. We got the Hilltoppers. Yeah. Oh, oh, we're not winning that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm kidding. Who knows? There's a chance, but WKU, for example, WKU. All right, it's kind of a program like we were, yeah, struggling for a while. Now they've been in and out of the top 25. I mean, uh, two years ago, two years ago they were top 25, and they have a quarterback almost every year that gets drafted. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, I mean, uh, one of the quarterbacks is was starting recently in the NFL from last year. So we got to just who? Um, Ellinger? Who was it? Yeah, I think yeah. yeah. Okay. Ellinger was in yeah. Texas. I don't know, no, not um I don't know. It was one of the Western WKU quarterbacks. They, like in the last five years they've had two. Oh, or three. in the last five years. I thought yeah. you were talking about this past week. No, no, no. Ellinger, oh, Ellinger yeah. was at Texas. Ellinger was the yeah, only person no. who came and started. No, 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 no. Yeah. 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 But um but yeah, other than that, I just I mean if they can do it, that's like we have the same stuff that that school has. Mm-hmm. So we can get to a top level program. Not saying they are, but they were top twenty five not too long ago. So we can get up there. I guess, yeah, it sums a lot from the defense side as well. I mean, I'm looking at the scores right now. I We have literally given up at least 20 points in pretty much all of every game, mm-hmm. which is insane to me. Like, I think what what is our biggest win was uh, we lost to Louisville by, what, 42 points? What the f- – what? And that's, that's recently after you go and you give UF a run. Yeah, exactly. Oh, the Gators are running. The Gators are looking terrible, though, honestly, oh, yeah, which is yeah, crazy. Yeah. On it's the so SEC up and down for the USF this year because you go from UF where you almost beat them. You're this close to I was, beating them. I was in that stadium, and it was unbelievable. We were up. It was up. electric, we were up probably, 10 to three. Yeah. It was electric. We were up 10 to 3. I mean, <clears throat> it was electric between me and the other USF people yeah. there. <laughs> but it was, it was dead silent, and you had all the people in green, which is not that many, but we were, everyone's just screaming happy. It was up ten to three, and then you know. Then you go. Lost, then, then you go to next week. You go Louisville. Yeah, and, and you just get cooked. And and Louisville's what? not a better team than. The you start with UF like they're they're a not football program. It's, it's it's crazy. UF's so. a football program with highly like one of the best fo- football programs like of all time. Mm-hmm. We're talking like legends that went to that school mm-hmm. and. You almost beat Florida in a in a game where you're projected where where your bet against on what what was the spread like twenty? Unbelievable! It was something crazy. Yeah. Like it was that. insane. It was something and you crazy. come that close, and then you go next week Louisville. The team's a roller coaster. It's up here. You got the highs, and mm-hmm. 
you know, you're there, you're right there, you're gonna you're gonna win the game against the big teams. And then you go into games with too much confidence and you perform so low that it just puts a big question mark on above your head. It's like, what's happening? Yep. Exactly. I, I knew after that after that loss it, the season was gonna be rough. And I, I thought he would get fired mm-hmm. too, and I just wasn't I wasn't sure how soon it would happen. Yeah, were you almost but, expecting this this year or kind of like you were waiting for it last year and it didn't I, come? I think they were going to let him finish the season, but, uh-huh. I mean, I guess I guess it's good to just experience. I think I USF mean, fans were just waiting left and right for it. I think they were asking every single week, when are we firing Jeff Scott? When are we firing well, Jeff Scott? I know, I know, Scott? I know Gabe right here, he was asking every week. He would come <laughs> I know in, I was. He would come in every Monday after a game oh. and he would be just well, letting it rip. Then I have to ask, then, how many weeks are you going to be these college coaches when they come in? Like, how many – are you giving them seasons? Like, when do you think is a right appropriate time? Two to three time? seasons. Two to three seasons? Two to three seasons. This is the third mm-hmm. season for Jeff Scott, mm-hmm. and he failed. Okay. Um, I was not ex- – uh, what it's he was hired in 2019. Uh, but, you know, I was um, – with that contract extension um, this past offseason for him, I was not – I don't mm-hmm. think anybody was expecting that. Mm-hmm. Um, I was – I was probably on the top of that list was the most surprised – um, and then when he got it, I'm like, yeah, it's going to turn out bad. And sure enough, we're in week nine, one and eight, and we don't, and we don't have an actual head coach. Um, Daniel DePrado is a good coach. Um, he's a good special team coordinator. Um, but it just, it, but it's special teams. Like, you know, like it's not like he's so Ernie Smith or the offensive coordinator. But mm-hmm. you know, DePrado is a good coach who's very involved in this program. So mm-hmm. I, have, I have a little bit of faith in him. Yeah, what do you think the outlook kind of is on the rest of the season? Uh, who do we got left? Under? We got SMU. Yeah, we got see. USF has SMU uh, this weekend. They won't win that. They have. They got UCF at the at the. We got SMU, Tulsa, and then we got U- UCF is November twenty sixth. Yeah, we got the Warren I four. Uh, the Warren I four. Um, <sighs> we we taking the dub. What is it? Yeah. We can beat Tulsa maybe. Tulsa uh, maybe. I see the Tulsa. Dub. I think SMU so. SMU is a very good SMU is a very good uh, football program. Yeah. Um, I don't think I think we might win one out of these last three. Maybe we won't beat you at UCF or maybe. SMU, and we might beat Tulsa. But I wouldn't even wouldn't bet on it. You know, the fans would probably. What's What's bad is we talk about the culture. We don't know what fans are showing up to that Warren I four that last Warren I four game. That's here, right? That's, That's in, here, yeah, yeah. but it's also Thanksgiving weekend. Mm-hmm. And yeah. you know it's kind of hard to go to a game on Thanksgiving weekend when 100%. everyone's out of town. Yep. I know I'm coming back for it, <laughs> but I don't know about the other people because this is my last Warren I four on campus. So yeah, I want to go see it, it next really year. Is, next yeah. year, next year the rival is going to be against FAU, who I grew up like thirty minutes or like thirty minute trip. Yeah. So you know, I would like to see UCF. Mm-hmm. Uh, unfortunately, we're going to get uh, USF's going to get whooped. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't know. We Maybe. know now. Maybe. Top 25 team right now, ranked 22 UCF is. Mm-hmm. And I mean, it'd be awesome. If we, won, if we won one out of those three, I mean, that would be the best one to, mm-hmm. to win for sure. You know what? Let, let's send a message, though, to these new guys, these new coaches in there. We want UCF down. We yeah. want to go 3-0 and to finish. You go 3-0 and to finish the season, and they'll get that job if they want it. Buys you some time. It does. Go 3-0, and finish the season on that. And go off on a high note to next year. Oh, by all means, if DePrado... That's the best case scenario. If yeah. DePrado goes 3-0, you know, he's getting hired. As oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's yeah, that's what I'm yeah, saying. Fill in. No, John go Gruden three, won't no. even be in the... You win the war on I-4 in our season. John Gruden won't even be in the question. I'll do it as an up season. <laughs> John Gruden won't even be in the question if DePrado goes 3-0 you know, to end mm-hmm. out the season. So he'll be like, why didn't we hire DePrado earlier? Look at this guy. I mean... Mm-hmm. Why didn't we? <laughs> I mean, DePrado's been in... DePardo's been in the game for a long time. Mm-hmm. Um, he was also he was also my uh, fun fact about DePardo, Jeff Scott's first hire as USF head coach. Mm-hmm. So um, uh, he came into the program same time as Scott did, um, yeah. and and um, uh, is he from uh, another college program? As he well? he went to he had a season with Arkansas. Okay. Um, he's His done. SEC teams are. Yeah. Crazy. I mean, I mean the coaching and what was his role again? Wasn't he a special team? Like special teams coordinator. Yeah, coordinator. yeah. that's in, that's interesting to go from special teams because usually one of the coordinators coordinators will get moved up, mm-hmm. not uh, with in house. Teams. Yeah, right. Yeah. He was also with Colorado, Montana State. Colorado is where probably he got his job at uh, Arkansas yeah. because he buffs are yeah buffs were weren't bad. That was a couple a, years back. Yeah, yeah. I hope the product proves me wrong because. 
And it's a little concerning considering he came in the same time as Jeff Scott. Four and twenty six record, one and nineteen in the AAC. That's yeah. uh well, I mean, Jeff's, Jeff Scott was trying to culture change, so, I mean, that could be mm-hmm. part of the culture change. He could Again. be bringing a better mm-hmm. culture, per se. Yeah, maybe. So I'm excited to see what the Prado does. I'm yeah. really excited to see what the Prado does yeah. because, you know, it's yeah. kind of cool to see what a special teams coordinator mm-hmm. takes over a full, mm-hmm. a full football team. It's kind of yeah. interesting. Where... Anything, anything's more exciting than what we saw the last three years. A hundred percent. I mean, Anything. You, you got so much to build up from here, so, I yeah. mean, he's got the whole yeah. world. I'm excited. To... You got a new coach? You know, we're, we're going into this weekend. But, I mean, we have no expectations now for the rest of the year. So those no. players are going to be playing like that. Except yeah. for the UCF, you're not, you're, like, like you're, not, you're not trying to save Jeff Scott anymore. You're going out there just to, just you know. Get this season over Get the season yeah. over Because you, you ain't going to a bowl game. So yeah. you just kind of, so now these next three weeks are kind of like, they, they right, make where does this team right stand? Now, these players. Especially with the seniors that are going to. Yeah, who do we got going this year? Do you know? No clue, actually. That's that's definitely always an interesting kind of factor. Very, very. Think about it. Who's who's better in leadership on the team? Mm-hmm. All that kind of stuff. Isn't well. Xavier Weaver a senior? He might be. I don't know. But once again, that would you be also he. You also have to um, factor in the uh, extra year of eligibility with COVID. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. to whoever those students, so we don't know who's going this year. Yeah, I guess we don't know yet. But okay. Transfers, hopefully, our transfer market, like you said, it was good before. Our uh, transfer market in, in this past offseason was phenomenal. Yeah, it was. We were really like well, being yeah. ranked as like from like 24 7 sports, like the best transfer market, mm-hmm. up along with uh, what was it? Stanford, I think. I don't know. Mm-hmm. We, we that, were up I there. was excited. That, that's what made me so excited for this year. Mm-hmm. You know, we, we had good transfers come in. I think just, if you were following this football team and you know about the transfer portal, you saw everything that USF was doing. You were excited for this year. Mm-hmm. You were really excited. I mean, granted, Azu Azu, uh, Cle- um, wide receiver from Clemson, he got hurt, so he hasn't even touched a field yet in, mm-hmm. in the green and gold for mm-hmm. USF. Mm-hmm. So who knows what's going to happen to him. Hopefully hopefully he's good, uh, good and running for yeah. the 2023 season. But, um, you know. That guy's fun to watch. Once again, mm-hmm. he, like, once again, we were talking about names and history, Clemson. Jeff Scott was yeah. from Clemson. Yep. Was, yeah. Wasn't that great? So I guess we'll see where Azua Azua leads. We will. Just have to check. I don't know. I think, I think we'll kind of end it on the note of, like, who would you guys like to see here? Just give me, like, one mm. name, a guess, mm. anything. I think it's too close to call. I, I know I know the but, U.S. had donors want uh-huh. Gruden. Okay. That's the, so what I was going to say is, as much as I don't, you know, I don't want Gruden in a standpoint that he'll get us, you know, like, where we necessarily want to be as quick as we need to get there in terms of winning. But, I mean, it's just, you know, that's excitement, I guess. Yeah, it's like re- recognition versus it wins. Is. Like, what yeah. do you – I mean, right now I feel like, like you said, we might need a little bit more recognition. Yeah, and, and, and also that that brings, you know, national news mm-hmm. here. So I kind of want – I don't know. I, I, I think that wouldn't be a, a horrible thing to think about, to consider. Mm-hmm. But that obviously would be a lot of consideration. And I'm talking to a lot of people. I think head happens. coaching should be waiting until the end of the season. Let's see how DePrado does. Mm-hmm. Let's see how, yeah, obviously. Let's see how so give, give him a chance. Sure. Let's, yeah, let's, give, yeah, sure. let's get. I think DePrado, either way, he's still going to remain on this staff. I don't think he's getting fired anytime yeah. soon. Maybe. He does a very good job with our special teams. I like yeah. what he does with our special teams. Um, but once again. We also again, have very good returners. All exactly. American. We got yeah. some quick boys. Yeah, we do. USF got some quick boys. Yeah. So, uh, but, you know, let's see what DePrado does. Gruden's there. I know the donors want him. He comes to all the basketball games. Get a good relationship with Michael Kelly. Bad history. Mm-hmm. Um, we all know what happened with the Raiders. <laughs> yeah. mm-hmm. um, but, you know, we'll see what happens. I think yeah. Gruden's probably the number one name on the number one name, on just kind of like mm-hmm. on the radar. Um, I haven't really heard of anybody else, so we'll see what happens from that. All yeah, right. for sure. For sure. Well, I appreciate you guys coming on. Well, thank you for having thank us. Thank you for having yeah, us. Yeah, for sure. Show. Always good to pick them on. Yep. <laughs> all right. Um, I forgot the intro thing. I guess you can edit this out, but what should I say for the intro? Well, pretty much the same. I'm excited to see the team come out. Um, Danny Manning is a contender. Um, I guess we're uh, okay. Thank you guys for all the great feedback. Thank you for listening. Once again, thank you for listening to the Z Cast. I am Sebastian Wick here with Gabe Glassman and Scotty Schimmel, and have a good one.
Yeah, all right. Awesome, guys. Thanks. Appreciate good stuff, that, good stuff. Thank you, Jeremiah.